You are now tuned in to We Move Against the Tides Radio on KUSF.org. Thank you for tuning on in. If you hear that in the background, we actually got Scott Mickelson from Fat Opie tuning, hanging out, getting stuff ready. Um, we got an amazing guest host today who's going to talk to us a bit about, you know, it's great music scene. Maybe a little bit about a uh, hometown of Massachusetts. We'll see what's up. <laughs> <laughs> but for now, we're going to play some music, um, get some stuff going while um, Scott gets a little ready. Uh, we'll come back and talk to him a little bit. Ready? But, <laughs> you ready? Oh, perfect. There we go. Look at that. Well, um, how about we start off with the song? Does that sound good? Sounds good to me. Cool. We'll start off with the song, come back and talk a little bit, and continue. Once again, you're tuned into We Move Against Tides Radio on KUSF.org. Scott, you want to introduce this song for everybody? What song is it? I don't know. What song are you going to play? Oh, I'm going to play. Oh, <laughs> is that what this thing is in my head? I wasn't sure. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Let's see, I'm going to do a song about the, uh, the family that lives a few doors down from you. Perfect. I've got splinters as deep as bones Insulation in my throat And the pounding in my brain Never seems to go away I'd build fences if I could But these hands, they're as good as wood The guards are against me No, not her It's where we are not where we were A ten-ton heavy thing It's a ten-ton heavy thing It's a ten-ton heavy thing It goes on and on and on But she pierces ears Down at the mall Sells kids shoes that's not all Medicare's in the living room I'd sweep up But I can't hold the room And that's a ten-ton Heavy thing It's a ten-ton Heavy thing It's a ten-ton Heavy thing It goes on song but when winter comes along Christmas Elvis is a hit naughty or nice you're gonna get a piece of it but when you hear the sound of my wheelchair you better stand clear cause when you don't know Your whole life to get there, and that's a ten ton everything. 
Once again, you are tuned into We Move Against Tides Radio on KUSF.org. That was Scott Mickelson. You want to say hi to everybody, Scott? Hey, everybody out there. <laughs> <laughs> everybody out there in cyber world. Um, so we're going to have Scott coming in playing some – well, Scott's in, so he's been playing some music for us. Also, we're going to talk a little bit about some stuff that's going on with Fat Opie and some stuff you got going on on your own, right? Yeah, sounds, sounds good, good to me. Cool. So we're going to go into some music. Any opportunity to talk <laughs> about me, I'm happy with. I mean, right. That's perfect. I even Any took o- off my hat. <laughs> oh, things are getting serious in the KUSF studio, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> but until then, we're going to play a little bit more music by some local artists in the Bay Area. Come on back, and we'll talk a little bit more. So be sure to stay tuned in. This next song is called Howdy East Orange by the Plastic Arts off of Academy Clones. Well, I fan the flame from Mary that went now when you arrived. But however wrong the reasons Stay the course and made a life Around a friend I thought Would be a better wife And I pretended I could leave and never write But I counted on the memory Of your love to feel alive when the life that I was leading Had convinced my heart to die Through all the years I lost The fears and new lies When all the tears I fought Appeared and still denied My dreams are all devoted And my thoughts always drift to you Wife admits we're fond, but not in love What hope was left eroded Now there's nothing left to lose I know it's wrong to tell you now But much to my dismay So hear the words I love you when I say How do you store it? Now the things I used to hope for All get put up on the shelf With the wife and kids to care for There's no more living for myself I watch beliefs I held Get buried in the past With all the needs I thought To please my new last Dreams are all devoted And my thoughts always drift to you My wife admits we're fond but not in love What hope was left eroded Now there's nothing left to lose I'm sorry it doesn't say it now For such a long delay But hear the words I love you when I say Howdy East Orange How many years are left to waste on dreaming How many years were lost along the way I tried to make the best, but now I'm screaming It only made it worse to long to say My dreams are all devoted And my thoughts always drift to you My wife admits we're fond, but not in love Hope was left eroded Now there's nothing left to lose It doesn't make a difference now But later on it may So hear the words I love you in 
and I say Howdy East Orange And though we're not together now You're not too far away To hear the words I love you when I say Howdy East Orange And that was the Plastic Arts with Howdy East Orange off the Academy clones. Um, so we're back in the studio with uh, Scott Mickelson from Fat Opie. So, Scott, how are you doing? How's everything going? I'm doing great. It's been a great day so far. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's amazing. Um, how are you feeling this, uh, this San Francisco sun that just randomly came out of nowhere? I mean, it, it was foggy all day. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I, I miss it. Uh, I used to live right up the street from here. I lived uh, uh, up in uh, Coal Valley up until the last year. So right. this is kind of uh, a more, a more acclimated to this weather than uh, over <laughs> in Marin where it's just too hot for me. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that absolutely. Um, so for those listening, um, can you give them a bit of a, you know introduction to who you are, who Fat Opie is, sure, and what you do? Sure, sure. Yeah. So um, my name's... Scott Mickelson. I'm the, the singer-songwriter for a, a band called Fat Opie. Uh, we've been in San Francisco and in the Bay Area. This is our 20th year. Oh, that's uh, we, awesome. 20 years. Yeah, we, we started when we were three. <laughs> and, uh, 23 years old. That off, joke never right. gets old. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I'll be using it uh, constantly. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we started a while back. We just released our fifth album called Victoryville. And uh, in the, especially in the last two months, we've had an incredible amount of really good press across the country, right. which is making me really happy. Absolutely, yeah. um, everywhere but the Bay Area, of course. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that'll, that'll hopefully change one day. And uh, and I've been playing uh, the the other original members in Fat Opie. Uh, the bass player is Robin Hildebrandt, and the drummer is Dave Table. And um, uh, the three of us have been together for twenty years, and and uh, through thick and thin, and uh, with the exception of uh, an illness that I had uh, for uh, from about 2002 till about 2009, uh, but we were not active during that time, and mm. uh, they kind of stuck with me like brothers. And and uh, when it was time to get working again, Robin, the bass player, uh, built a little studio and in his home, and uh, you know, and come on, you go out, let's do, let's just try something, let's try recording something. Nice. And it took a little while to to get it going, and then in about 2010, I. Um, Finally wrote a decent song. Uh, I've been I had to get some crappy ones yeah. out of my system first. Uh, a song called uh, uh, "Gay in Texas," and then a song called "Victoryville." And um, I think at that point I started feeling really confident as a writer again. And then Absolutely. the rest of "Victoryville" came pretty quickly. Mm. And uh, we recorded it and released it. And and I'm actually not to get too far ahead, but we're already. Um, nine songs tracked for the next record but wow. that, that, that'll be next year you know okay. um, so around this time next year or? i'm hoping yeah okay. yeah nice. i don't want to i don't want to lose the momentum that victoryville is starting to get for us right now absolutely absolutely but, but i get itchy so even yeah. on stage I, I tend to play the majority of new songs and <laughs> i'm always about two years behind you know <laughs> yeah i mean and i think i've seen so much come out from victoryville so much press and so much just like acclamation in terms of all the work that you've done so it's been it's been great to see that. No, oh, so thank you. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think it's uh, pretty amazing to see you know a local, especially Bay Area artist, come out and actually you know get this acclaim and this 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 kind of a uh, acknowledgement from places not even around this area, you know, which is awesome. So that's really cool. Um, so how did how did you meet the rest of the band of Fat like rest of Fat Opie? How did that come to be? So uh, let's see. Um, I you know this isn't my first band, but uh, right. you know as I. I, I was with a band in, in Southern California. I moved up here, and, okay. and uh, my wife was going to law school up here, my girlfriend at the time. And I uh, started doing the open mics and the solo acoustic thing after putting away all the uh, synthesizers and <laughs> and that kind of thing. I don't want to date myself, but that's... so you you were in that stage. Then. Oh yeah, yeah. When you guys were were still uh, notions and not people yet. <laughs> notions. That's a, that's a that's a great term. And uh, <laughs> and. Uh, 
eventually I, I had a collection of songs and uh, we did a we did a, a demo and and it was uh, you know it was still a little too uh, strummy for me and then uh, you know the nineties were happening and, right. and I grew up listening to Neil Young and Crazy Horse right. and, and right. you know the Stones and things like that and yeah. I had older brothers so I some of classic stuff. yeah I put away the acoustic and decided to uh, start playing you know rock again and. Where I worked at Winterland Productions, it was, um, they're out of business now, but they were a really big rock merchandiser. There was a, a guitarist who was uh, coming out of a rock band, and he was a real kind of a Chili Peppers kind of player. Okay, so more of a newer type contemporary type Yeah, type and uh, we went in and we recorded our, our first record, uh, Biscuits, uh, at the record plant. We did it in, um, you know, went in on Friday, came out on Sunday, mixed and mastered. And <laughs> Within one weekend? Yeah, it was all week. live in the studio. And, That's and, awesome. And uh, we were, you know, it's funny because I, I recently saw some video footage of us playing down at what is now Milk. It used to be Boomerang. and Milk? Where is it set? On Haight Street. Oh, Milk, Milk Bar. Bar. Yeah. Oh, wow. It used to be the Boomerang. You know, there used to be five <laughs> rock clubs on Haight Street. A lot of people oh, don't man. know that. And it used to be a rock town. Bar. Yeah. That's intense. Right across the street, that coffee shop or whatever that is, that used to be the night break. Wow. They used to have sushi Sundays. You know, six bands, sushi bar set up, and it was awesome. That's there, amazing. There were, there were a I bunch had of, no idea. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that album got us um, got us a deal with Lookout Management, in, okay. uh, who was Neil Young's manager. And uh, so that was really exciting. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to condense the whole story. But <laughs> uh, one thing led to another. I, I uh, uh, When, when uh, the Kiko record came out by Los Lobos, okay. um, I was ready to, you know, they, they, I don't know how well you know the record, but uh, yeah. it's kind of like a masterpiece. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, there's such talented musicians and they play uh, such an eclectic mix of instrumentations. Absolutely. I, yeah, I've, I've listened to them before. So. Yeah. And I, I just went down to Mission Street and just pawned off uh, an old amp that I had and got a mandolin and a banjo. <laughs> I tried something different. Yeah. And mm. that, that really led to, you know, so in 94, Four, I was already tracking with banjo in the context of the band. Wow! So almost about twenty years. Yeah, and uh, that's amazing. So you know, it's. <laughs> we, we, I think we're getting a lot of recognition now because uh, some of the songs on the new, on Victory Villa are on, have a lot of banjo. Yeah, and, and, absolutely. Uh, you know, there's the whole um, you know, Mumford and Sons and mm, all of that this movement coming out. Yeah, and I, so I think it's easier to to, to you know, group us, but really this was. You know, I've been doing almost recording or integrating the the banjo into a rock setting, right? Absolutely. Um, for a long time, and uh, and actually, the the new record that I'm recording, eight out of the nine songs are written on the banjo. Oh. So, wow. Maybe after that, I'll get bored. I was thinking I'm picking up the concertina next or something. There you go, something yeah. different. Yeah. Um, you know, the glasses, the little you know bottles mm. and glass. I'm yeah. Kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, Start drumming out on some pans or something yeah. a little different. <laughs> well, even in, in, uh, two th uh, in two thousand, well, we recorded in 98, came out in 99. Um, it was more of, the album was called Airstream okay. and it was much more of an alternative rock record, but um, the biggest, we had kind of a hit on that, a song called Bolts in My Briefcase and uh, that was uh, written on the banjo and that, you know, got us national attention and, mm. We won this MP MTV National Band Search thing really? and um, wow. money and things like that. But, uh, you know, short-lived. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> things you change. move on to the next thing. Yeah. So, you know, it's... It's it's funny. And, and also, the, the two guys that I work with, we're all really... Um, you know, none of us have made a lot of money and everybody's working really hard and, and uh, it doesn't... Every time I come up with new material, it really is fresh all the time. Right, right. It's, you know, we never resort to, the music is so eclectic and it keeps changing that we never fall back onto things. Mm -hmm. So I'm just really blessed you know, yeah. that these guys even show up. Definitely, you know. definitely. Awesome. Well, for those of you tuning in, um, I'm sitting down talking with Scott Mickelson. Be sure if you have any questions for Scott about anything, especially his socks maybe, um, you can be sure to tweet us at, at WMATT Music. Or you can call the radio station hotline, which is one four one five seven five one five eight seven three. Those last four numbers are actually KUSF. So you can call on in, ask Scott some questions, um, and I'm sure Scott will be definitely willing to answer <laughs> if they're not too crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, as so, long as I'm not being graded, I'm happy. There you go. There you go. Um, so yeah, we'll come on back, um, talk a little bit more with Scott. But Scott, I mean, talking a bit about the banjo, how about you play us a song on the banjo? Uh, okay. Yeah? Sounds oh, good. there happens to be one right here. Oh, perfect. Look at that. There's a banjo in the studio. Oh. 
How did I get there? Scott, do you want to introduce the name of the song? Um, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And you know what's great about this song? What's great about this song? (laughs) We're going to be playing this song May 4th at the Lost Church. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Who else is playing that show? Uh, River Shiver will be playing uh, the set first, uh, right. the first set, and you know Brandon and Brandon you know, Zersky, Brandon Zersky right. amazingly talented guy. Um, I'm a fan, nice guy, and uh, um, I'm just glad they're able to do the show with us. Absolutely, cool. Scratch this itch. Got a crowbar and opened up this trunk. Picked a sidewalk where I could lay my junk. And a moment, aces in my hand. There's gold in this pan among rocks and sand. Singing, drinking wine to new bars to sit in, changing lines in new places to star in, inventing rules and new games to cheat in, but a plan.
And that was Scott Mickelson playing some amazing music on the banjo in KOSF Studios. That's actually a first. So we've had we've had a a cello, but not a banjo. So that's a first. Oh, good. <laughs> and of, of course, that's uh, you know Scott Mickelson from Fat Opie. Yeah, Scott Mickelson from Fat Opie. To clarify that a little bit, um, and they'll be having a show May fourth, which is next week. Yeah, a week from Saturday, and uh, it's going to be, be we'll, we'll be debuting that with the whole band, and we have uh, Luke Curley playing tuba on it. Yeah, I actually saw that photo on y'all's Facebook. <laughs> yeah. That is a massive instrument. Uh, that's what she said. Sorry. Uh, um, <laughs> and that was absolutely necessary. Sorry, low-hanging fruit. Oh, that's what she said. But, um, sorry oh, about man. that. Yeah, well, we, got, we actually have a few guest players. Uh, we'll have, um, you know, Mendelssohn from Jugtown Pirates will right. be playing uh, some okay. mandolin. And we have, you know, the nucleus of Fat Opie is, is Dave Tavel on drums and Robin Hildebrand on bass. Right. And we're the core members, but we also have... Dennis Hanetta playing guitar, who okay. you might know from, um, uh, I'm going to draw a blank. Somebody help me. <laughs> uh, from a really good band. <laughs> Shoot. And uh, we have uh, Reem Regina Tatar singing backup vocals, and we have Gentry Bronson uh, playing piano, and okay. each one of these people is just, you know, really talented. I mean, it's, talented. A, it's an intensely eclectic music, like... You yeah, know, diverse thing you got going on there. Well, I'm trying to make it, you know, we we'll only do locally maybe five or six shows a year. I'm okay. trying to not do too many full band shows and trying right. to make each one pretty a, exclusive. Or... Yeah, a unique set list. And I'm always trying to bring in guest players. Got and it. I, I okay. want it to be, you know, like a, a collective band. Or, you know, Definitely. So it's a celebration every time, you know, we're playing here. And, and it's been great because, you know, there's so many talented people, talented people in the Bay Area. And, um, each doing amazing projects, so when people can make the time to come out and, and play uh, and listen, uh, you know, I never take it for granted. Absolutely. I mean, and with that being said, since these shows are so exclusive, I recommend that everybody listening go because this is one of those things that you won't get the chance to see ever again. Because I doubt all these people will be on stage at one time again together. That's true. Uh, <laughs> that's true, and well, <clears throat> hopefully not true, but possibly true. <laughs> unless I unless I piss everybody off. Um, <laughs> But uh, you know, but last time we played there, it did sell out. So I do, you know, I know it sounds like hype, but I do encourage if you did want to go to try to get tickets in Absolutely. advance. It's just uh, such a small, intimate place. So. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah. Well, there's a recommendation. Definitely check out those tickets. Um, check out more from Fat Opie um, online on their Facebook, on Twitter as well. Fat Fat Opie, Fat Opie on Facebook, um, and we'll come on back and talk to Scott a little more. But for now, um, we're gonna enjoy some music. This is Mr. Kine with the artist off of OK. <laughs> Escaping to be alone with his thoughts, see to completion his great work of art. And heaven sprung pieces inside of his head, it haunted his night, caused sleep to evade. Winters, spare settled in. The walls couldn't warm him, the fires could dim. But once he embraced it, he was free to dissolve. His particles of air found his resolve. Trying to catch no siphon flow. He had more raw substance than he could stand to bear. The task that became was to keep what to bear. More sustenance and creation. I don't know why. His cup overflowing was pouring the mind. Long, not long after, 
found what he had lost The motive for invention He once had Begin to die Sun sprung And sets Inside of his head And to this intuition He dissolved
And that was Local Hero. The song was called Lady Wisconsin off of the album titled Lady Wisconsin. Before that, we played Great Plans by Mike Huguenot off of Bartamu. And before that, we played The Artist by Mr. Kine off of the album OK. For those of you tuning in, and hopefully you're not just tuning in recently because you've missed a good amount of the show, and I'm pretty disappointed because we've had some great stuff. Um, Scott Mickelson from Fat Opie actually just played some stuff on the banjo. That's amazing. Um, so if, if, you're, if you're just tuning in, stay tuned because there's a lot more to come from that. But um, So, Scott, um, I was actually interested to talk a bit about Victoryville has had so much success, so much, you know, um, acknowledgement you know people have been noticing it so how, how was the process of going about putting that together with the band well um it was a kind of a, a long and involved process but be, be, <laughs> as usual thank you for asking that question but i i have to mention dennis Hanetta's band uh the, the courtney janes i drew a, i had a brain there fart. we go I forgot. They're, they're, they're great and um he plays uh acoustic and ben plays mandolin and they do something really really unique awesome. and also a good friend of mine alex menez <laughs> joins us on stage and it's always a pleasure you know that yeah. he comes to the table you alex know. is also an avid listener to to yeah Move Against the Tides radio, and he's so. a great singer songwriter <laughs> great guy um, yeah. so you know there's just a lot of people that i've been able to interface with uh, you absolutely know. absolutely um with uh with victoryville uh i wrote the songs uh they, they came pretty quickly once i started writing them in, in about 2010 and at that time we had a guitarist that um kind of dropped out halfway through the record oh, and wow. uh and then within the band we kind of broke up um mm. Uh, you know, during the, it was a, a very, I was amazed that I was able to get it done. So I basically wow. had to finish everything in my house um, and then went and mixed it over at uh, Tiny Telephone. Okay. And then we all, you know, once the music was mixed and we all heard it, we all fell back in love with each other and <laughs> and realized, you know, we just, you know, life goes on and, and things happen. And, I, you know, as you guys get older, you'll see the more, right. the more, the longer you live, the more shit you see and the more stuff you're exposed to. And, right, and right. Um, that can really pull, uh, on your artistic endeavors, and, definitely, um, definitely. But we're still here, and, and we're making another record, and you know it goes on. But um, it was really, I felt like all I wanted to do was just get the record done, right. and uh, um, and, I, um, and then uh, you know we played it a little bit, and Tom Rhodes came and joined us on right, stage right, for a few right. shows, and I love Tom, and, <clears throat> and um, he became a, a guitarist, and of course he's he's really involved with his own own projects, and uh, he's just a great friend of the family, and. Uh, and then, basically, I hired a publicist for the first time, <laughs> and you know we were just pleasantly surprised uh, that um, you know places all across the country that you know, I've never played before were, were picking up on it. And I think, for I think what they're latching onto is that uh, lyrically, um, these songs truly are narratives, and they're not. You know, I get asked if I'm Americana a lot because I use a banjo, but it's. It's not Americana unless you're willing to redefine what Americana is. Right, and, exactly. and, it's, and it's not playing Dylan-esque songs, and it's not mm -hmm. talking about bars and railroads and things like that. That's to me that that's that's fine. That's not what I do. I'm trying to write about the the condition of American lives in contemporary times. Absolutely, definitely. And uh, and not my personal struggles. That that you know that'll come out one one every few songs. You know, first person. Um, and there's a little bit of me in all the characters, but I, I, you know, I, I guess I'm, uh, really respect writers like Paul Simon or yeah. Springsteen or people who create these characters and, uh, Tom Waits is a hero mm -hmm. of mine. And, and then, you know, draw your personal experiences into the, into the characters. And I think that, um, from the reviews that I've gotten, people are actually really listening to the lyrics. Definitely. And, Definitely. uh, I think that, and... You know, places like Pittsburgh or Boston or other uh, places that are Belgium, you know, places where we're getting reviews, uh, North Carolina, <laughs> uh, you know, um, it's a lot of these guys have been around for so long. How come we haven't heard of them? Right, you know, right. why, why am I so late to the party? Right. And uh, so my my answer to that is yeah why are you so late to the party <laughs> because uh, we've been here but you know it's a different world now you know there's it's, it's a different world when we started so Absolutely. Definitely. there was no such thing as an internet when we started imagine <laughs> yeah imagine that <laughs> so um <laughs> imagine publicizing shows and press without internet you know wow. we had to do a thing with stamps and you actually had to lick them 
That's intense. I don't even so, understand that anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's just a different world. So I think now, um, you know, it feels really good, and and you know, I, I feel really, really healthy, and uh, everybody in the band is, you know, we're back at, at the height of our powers. So yeah, it, absolutely. Um, yeah, with the exception of some aches and pains. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and, and how is that uh, that experience in, in Victoryville seeming like a kind of coming up after, out of like years of not really having anything or doing anything? You said you had a, a kind of a, a hiatus for a while due to, to I, some stuff you went through. Yeah, I had a I had a neurological thing that was just making it impossible, yeah. uh, kind of re- deteriorating and not make. I just couldn't. You know, I found myself not being able to definitely not write and then not really be able to play and then not being able to sing and and then we did an album in 2002 which we just uh did in the week uh, an album called otis with just the three of us just acoustic bass drums just live in the studio and and then we tried to do a couple shows and i remember finding myself at a place called 12 galaxies on mission street i don't know what it's called now okay and uh Halfway through the show, just think I just can't do it. You know, mm. I just can't do it anymore. And it just got a little worse after that. And over time, and then you know, I, uh, I want to give some props to Casey Turner. I'm sure a lot of people do, but uh, you know, he was doing the Red Devil open mics. Right, and right. We did a couple shows. We reuni- uh, we reunite. <laughs> I'm jumping around a lot. We, I, I turned to fine art for a few years, and I was able to do that and work by myself and focus on that. And you know, it was not. It was a different kind of demand, and I was starting to do a lot of one-man shows and mm-hmm. getting published and doing stuff for the Chronicles and actually started a little career okay. when I wasn't doing music, but, uh, you know, different kind of demand, and I went to do a one-man show at a, uh, down on the Mission, and the woman remembered Fat Opie from earlier days, and she, right. didn't, she put two and two together that I was that guy, and she, oh, you guys need to reunite, you guys need to play at the, you know, at the, the opening, Right. Without opening, oh no, we're not really a band, you know. <laughs> we, we, you know, we're retired and we're doing it, and uh, so we did. You know, we, we did that, and <laughs> um, and then I stopped painting, and that was the end of that. And then wow. you know, that's really when um, we we tried to do a couple of shows, and it just wasn't. You know, and the, back in the day, we were really tight and really we were touring a lot, and we were very dynamic, and right. we were just so rusty, and it just wasn't sounding good. So. Um, I'm bouncing around. This is before Victoryville, but I started doing the open mic down at Red Devil. Okay. And I remember getting up with the acoustic and just not being able to get through a song, not remembering anything. Just really took me a solid, you know, really up until recently to really get back to feeling good. About good. You know, yeah. I mean, it takes a long time. Yeah, definitely. You know, so, you know... Uh, I guess I'm rambling. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but but it's all interesting stuff, so that's totally fine. <laughs> but, I mean, so so like I was saying, like, how how has that process been different since it seems like Fat Opie has kind of established yourselves again? Like, like you've got, you've all have gotten it back together. Like, how has it been with the process of recording this new album that you said you already have a good amount of tracks ready for? Well, at this point, you know, we really, even though we have a, we have a history, we really started all over again. Yeah. So, because nobody knew who we were. I mean, there was no such thing as an email list. There was no yeah. such thing as yeah. Facebook, you know, our our mailing list is irrelevant you know right. uh, so we really started all over again in about 2010 and, and, and in a sense victory Ville is almost like a first album you know with mm. this new mentality so um i guess that the, the newest new record is different because um i have my own studio okay and you know robin has some great gear and we can combine our gear and i've got a, a sizable house and so i was we were able to track everything great drums and so I'm really able to engineer and produce it right from the beginning and have Definitely. control over it from right. the beginning not that I'm a great engineer but you know Robin's got great skills and between the three of us and many years and thousands of hours of recording yeah. you know we, we know what we want we know how to get it technically and um, and I love producing and that's that's really uh, something that I'm focusing more and more on I'm producing uh, Jeff DeSera's Long overdue record, you know. <laughs> Absolutely, I mean, definitely. Everybody knows Jeff. He's got great songs, great catchy tunes. Uh, He's a great, great guy too. Yeah. He, well, you know, <laughs> you know, you got to watch out those those Maltese guys. It's all about desserts <laughs> and shoes with them. Oh, but um, but he writes really catchy songs. He's really melodic, and I, he and I are just having a ball. And uh, Ooh, I'm so excited to get something out there with him. Um, I mixed a song uh, for Jay Trainer. Nice. Um, 
which was just a joy to me. You know, cause <laughs> I love Jay, and, and then we're actually doing another show, which we'll talk more about, but uh, we're going to be doing a big show together, Fat Opie and... Um, Jay Trainer at uh, Cafe du Nord in June. Cool. That'll be a full electric show, which That'll we haven't done since uh, October. Wow. So, um, cool. Yeah, yeah. So, and I'm and I'm more and more people are coming up to me and asking me to produce, and that's great because it's I'm not my angle isn't to be your studio where you know what are your rates. My angle is I really have to like the song and because mm. I really immerse right. myself in their music and definitely, I kind of definitely. it's a real like uh, investment I guess it's a more investment in time you know yeah. I'm not I'm not in it for the money you know that's so right. um, that's this, things are going in that direction and uh, I'm, I'm excited about it cool sounds exciting well, um, before we talk a bit more um, how about we get a song off of Victoryville sound good? yeah, yeah. I suppose <laughs> I suppose so I just finished a tour in, in, uh, in the Northeast, and um, uh, this is a song called Nicorette, and it's, it's, from, uh, it's from Victoryville. And I, any reason why I'm going to intro it is because I, I did a show in Boston uh, the day after the bombing. And uh, it was very, you know, I wrote this song years after 9-11, and um, it's, a, you know, it's a story of a guy who's, you know, a nervous wreck living in New York trying to give up smoking. And he's a window washer on top of everything else. And so it has kind of a comical feel to it. But I started playing this song, and by the time I got to the third verse, I was thinking, wow, this is really still relevant. Because, you know, after 9-11, a few years went by, and it was like, that must be the past. And uh, even though this is not, we don't even know why these guys did it, and you know, we right, have to right. go into motive. It kind of sucks that uh, we even have to think about that again. Yeah, definitely. definitely. So... Um, but uh, being back in Boston and having grown up in Massachusetts, these uh, a lot of people came out to the show. I was so pleasantly surprised, and the attitude was, I don't know how much you know about people from New England and Bostonians. <laughs> it's like, you guys, go ahead, throw another bomb at me. I'm still coming out. You know, yeah. There's no way. There's no way it's going to draw fear into these people. It just makes you want to fight harder. So. Says right here, I've been 
central Was hoping it didn't smell right I braced myself and waited near a fall It's tough times for window washers Till which way the wind blows The weather up here is oh so fine But there's only so much licorice I can chew That was Nicorette by Scott Mickelson from Fat Opie. So, Scott, I want to make sure that we use the rest of the time. we got a couple minutes here before uh, 5 o'clock hits, um, and we kind of go into just some local music. But um, you were talking a bit about producing. I mean, where where did uh, that interest start off from? Like, where, where did you kind of get into that from the first place? Like, Well, I, I uh, you know, I really did start recording, you know, back when I was sophomore in high school my mother right. my mother used to take me down to the studio and that kind of thing so i i've always been interested in, in the process of, of creating music and, absolutely and i don't want to sound cliche but <laughs> the, you know people like brian wilson and, and you know the beatles and people who used the, the studio not just to capture live performances that's great too but also as a as a medium definitely, uh, definitely. You know? and uh so and i think when i started working with uh uh I co-produced a record with a guy named Arjun McNamara, and he was this brilliant Pro Tools guy back when Pro Tools was new. He was a beta tester. Okay. So when we did the Airstream record, we were literally one of the first records to be done on Pro Tools. It wow. wasn't. It wasn't in, really in studios, and certainly not in people's homes. At the, you know, he was right, right, working right. for Digi Design. Wow. Um, so. The idea of being able to really edit and recreate and re-sculpt the songs. Uh, definitely, definitely was a, a, a inspirational to me. And then I just think I, I think for people who are writing and are coming from a singer standpoint, singer songwriter standpoint, or actually I did a jazz record too. But <laughs> I don't know. I just love it. I just think I, I if I may, I think I have certain um, intuitions and instincts that can be applied. And can be very helpful to someone's music, and I can be really objective about it. And uh, right, I think right. a lot of people, you know, they think they can produce their own music, right, and, right. and they can, but they're missing, you know. I I was produced when I was in the '80s. I used to mm-hmm. work. I used to be produced, and I used to have to work. Um, uh, I would have to come in with like 15 demos to try to find one song that the contract, you know, that my producers would like enough to want to record. So I was right. hammered um, with with. Uh, uh, skills and what works and what doesn't work. So I was kind of trained, I think, in a in a different way and at a different point in my Got life. It. Okay. And uh, I, I actually I don't I don't want to sound corny or cliche, but I really do get a great deal of satisfaction out of sitting with someone's song with them and having them try different ways to approach it, having them rewrite if they need to, and having them just make the song better and then smile, see them yeah. be like I this is. I never thought this could sound this good, you know, and Definitely. that's a really great sense of satisfaction to yeah. make somebody feel really good, even better than they thought they could feel about their own music, you know, Absolutely. and I, and it's, and I really, I guess that's why I like to do it. Yeah, you know? absolutely. I think it's, um, I, what I hear a lot of is too, that, you know, seeing someone's passion grow in a sense and having people grow in their passion in ways they never saw before too, which is amazing that, that that's awesome work. Um, and I see that in your writing too. It's very, it's, I mean, Thank it's very you. like a lot of very eloquent, like literature as if you're writing a story, you know? And I think 
one thing that I've noticed, especially nowadays, um, is kind of that's fading away. You know, you don't really hear much literature anymore. You don't you don't hear that essence of storytelling in, sto- in songs anymore. Yeah, and if somebody twists a couple of interesting lines, all of a sudden they're considered this great writer exactly, because they, the right. mo- everybody's just starved for a great cu- writing. A couple of one-liners. Yeah, there, and all of a sudden they're a great writer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think, and I really commend that. I think, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, I, especially myself, I, I come from a pretty heavy background in literature and very interested in reading, you know, the classics and stuff like that. So... You know, seeing artists like you, for example, tell stories in their writing is, is amazing. Oh, you know, thank you, so so I think I think seeing that the decline of that is very interesting. But I mean, I mean, you've been in the game for a good amount of time. So, how have you seen? I mean, this is a very vague question, but I guess to keep it a little more, you know, general, and I guess so you can answer. But how have you seen music change in ways? Like that are very eminent. I mean, like top three ways because I know there's so many different. There's so many ways that music has changed, and I know that you yourself have gotten into different scenes. But what are some things that that stand out to you? Well, uh, I think that it's become very, uh, very boiled down. Uh, what what stands today? I think that is considered really great. Okay. Ten or fifteen years ago would be very mediocre and not right. even signed. And okay. I think that the the level of acceptance of what is considered really good, uh, the bar keeps getting lower and lower. Yeah. And, you know, I, I I hate to sound like that, but I think if you're if you keep getting served lousy food, you start to appreciate the better of the lousy food. Right, right. <laughs> Even right. though it's all still and I, I, I mean I mean I know there's great artists out there, but I'm really amazed at uh how much of it is just so derivative right, it's almost right. derivative of bands that were already derivative to begin with <laughs> and it's one thing to be influenced uh, by great music and, and feel that in the music but some of it really almost sounds a lot of it sounds like almost like commercials like uh commercials for tv shows or right. and they don't you know there's just and I, and I know there's a lot of great stuff out there and i i, I tend to not really listen to that much contemporary music for mm-hmm. for a reason i just would rather just stay Objective. I mean, right. I, I listen to you know Ella Fitzgerald and things like that. So, mm-hmm. I, but um, so that's one thing. Sonically, you know, people uh, most people get their music from MP3s, right, right? And I think that uh, the dynamics of music and this isn't this isn't new information, but I think that the idea of making high fidelity music seems to be a thing of the past. Mm-hmm. And music is is recorded and mastered and compressed so it sounds good as right. an mp3 and i think that's tragic yeah and um and I'm, i guess the third thing is because anybody can just record now and put something up it's so saturated with mediocrity that um it's a benefit because it's inspiring people to be able to make music and put it out but it's also it kind of clogs the system it's, Absolutely. Re- it's really really hard um to, to make your way through it. And I guess the last thing, this is the fourth point, and this is the, probably the most important thing, is everybody wants their damn music for free. Yeah. And it bothers me. Everybody, you know, we get tons of plays on Spotify and all these things. Oh, but it's great exposure, it's great exposure, but no one buys it. Right. I sell them at the shows. We get very few downloads because I see how many people are listening. We get tons of plays right. for free. And everybody expects it for free. And they expect you to pay for free and they expect you to just make your music and give it away. And I mm-hmm. think... That's tragic, and uh, even Brooklyn Vegan, the big, huge blog in New York, yeah. they had a, um, yeah, you had an interview with a guy, and you yeah. say, "What advice should you give uh, for new bands?" Well, first of all, get out and play as much as possible in front of anybody as possible. Well, great, and then just give all your music away until you don't have to anymore. I mean, that's the advice that <laughs> yeah. people are telling us. So I, I, um, I think obviously I'm getting a little dramatic about, it, but I think <laughs> I think that's a real tragedy. No, it's, it's, it it's has real. cheapened yeah. what we do. Right, absolutely. I think uh, it's it's definitely grown into a whole new approach of, of artists having to go out and play more shows and make money from live performances, you know? Yep. And I think that's, I mean, that's extremely tiring for the artists, you know? I mean, an artist can go out and play about, like, six, seven shows a week, and that would be what it takes sometimes. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's great that people, you know, are more, uh, you know, more into playing live. That's a real benefit, but, right, right. you know, there should be a balance. I mean, definitely. people, you know, it's... Yeah, I understand, Absolutely. But um, so we're cutting close to time. But um, I, I definitely would be interested in hearing one more song. But do you want to talk to everybody else um, a bit about what you have going on? A bit about the June show you have, uh, the show for May fourth once again for those who had just tuned in, um, and maybe where people can reach you. Yeah, well, uh, May fourth, Lost Church, um, full band, 
show. Um, it, it'll be more of a semi-acoustic thing. Debuting songs, great guest players. River Tons Shiver, guest yeah, River <laughs> Shiver, uh, featuring uh, Brandon Zahersky is opening the show. Amazing talent. Um, and then in June fourteenth, we we break out the amps and we're going to do a, a big electric show at Do Nord uh, with Jay Trainer, Felson, and Naked Soul. And I expect everybody in the city of San Francisco to, to be, be there. Basically. Yeah, it's going to be a great show. And, uh, and if you're lost on the dates, be sure to check on the We Move Against the Tides calendar, and we'll definitely have those on there and, as and well. And fatopi.com. And, you know, everything's yeah. I try to keep it happening. And, uh, yeah. and uh, I guess you want me to play uh, Crying in Spanish, right? <laughs> there we go. Do you let's have do time this. for it? Yeah, let's All do right. this. I'm definitely in. So up next, to finish off for uh, his set, Scott Mickelson from Fat Opie. Is going to be playing one of my uh, my uh, personal favorite songs off of Victoryville. The song is called "Crying in Spanish." Um, so for those of you tuning in, um, this was our guest host with Scott Mickelson. Uh, be sure to check out FatOpie.com, Facebook FatOpie, uh, Twitter at FatOpie. So it's all pretty self-explanatory. Um, but stay in, stay in touch, keep connected. Um, there's going to be a lot coming from Scott Mickelson and FatOpie. But I have to find my favorite plectra. <laughs> this is usually where I tell a sheep joke. You, you get those good uh, one-liner jokes with for like going for you. I see that. <laughs> you guys have a sick mind. It wasn't a dirty sheep joke. <laughs>
Everybody, that was Scott Mickelson. Thank you for coming on there, Scott. I, I really, really appreciate it. Oh, thanks for having me, Victor. This was <laughs> a blast. Cool. Um, so I'm going to play some more music, and uh, we'll get by with the rest of the Bay Area-focused uh, playlist. Um, and be sure to check out Scott for the rest of the stuff he has coming on with Fat Opie. Cheers. Cool. Sounds good. Everybody, this next song is called Hey Marianne. Marianne. It's by Luke Sweeney off of Ether Orr. <laughs>
stands on TV The worst lines don't fill you
We need more places like that around this place, well, around these uh, areas, of course. You know, you got to support that uh, arts education. So that's how you get amazing artists like uh, Scott Milkison to come out and do amazing work. So I'm going to get back to music and stop talking because, you know, you're probably tired of my voice. But you're listening to We Move Against the Tides Radio on KUSF.org. If you have any questions for me, uh, for any artist, um, anything you're wondering, you want to know, my shoe size... Shoot me a tweet at, at WMATT Music or call in at 415 751 KUSF. That is 415 751 5873. Up next, I'm going to play a personal favorite. Um, and this song never really gets old to me. Um, and I'm going to play it because I like it. So this song is A1. The song's called Nostalgia off of the Thrill Tape. And I just dropped my iPad. D Sharp, Sharp State of Mind Radio. We got my man A1 in the building. What up, what up? And we was going to interview him, but I just want to do something different, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to throw out a year. And I just want you to let the people know what you was feeling like in that year. Okay. What was going through your mind. You know what I'm saying? Let's start with 1992. All right, 92. 
well, let's rock and roll. Not long ago, I was sitting on the potty with the lolly and the snotty nose. Messing with my sister's dollies, breaking off the heads of the cans and taking off the clothes of the Barbies. Big sis, I'm sorry, but you remember how we had that Atari? Then switched to Mario Brothers, it was my dad's. I was sad when him and my mommy broke up, cause it was hard for a son seeing his father go. Like, see you later, sayonari, and he out the door. And at the time, you see, that rocked me like a body blow. I had always hoped that maybe they get back together, but they probably won't. Do they love each other? Nah, they probably don't. Shit, that's hard to cope with, man. I'm five years old, man of the house, trying to amount to my mommy's hopes. Wow, that was deep, man. Keeping it real, man. Moving right along. Why don't we go to 2003? Oh, high school? Well, let's do it live. I'm still young. I'm still suffering from foolish pride. I get a lady's number like, baby, what you want to do tonight? A cutie pie with booty? I'm going to be slumbering with you tonight. But I was humble when this dude from my high school had died. Because if you knew him, you would think he was the coolest guy. A straight A student, so I never knew the reason why. He gave in and submitted, committed suicide. Maybe the world we live in wasn't meant for you and I to live in. Got it set up like a prison, make you lose your mind. Trap in this wicked system, who decide what rules apply? Who decide who's shining the shoes and whose shoes are shine? I know I'm drifting, but I'm tripping. What I do for dimes and pennies, they won't even do for Benjamins. That isn't right. Oh man, you know I feel that, man. Feel me, bro? So why don't we just go to 2008? 2008? Well, let's get it in. I'm hustling 10 to 10 while working a 9 to 5. I remember back in the days how I used to rise and shine. Now I'm waking up in the days without no kind of drive. I know right now's not my time to die. But somehow, on the real, I don't feel like I'm alive inside. Cause time and time again, when I'm trying to win, I fail. So you tell me why in the hell should I try again? Then I remember that my homie once told me he'd rather spend his time hustling than wondering what might have been. And he was right again. I ain't got shit to lose, but I bet tomorrow morning I'm gonna hit the snooze. Button up my shirt before work, gotta lace my shoes. Put on my pants, then do a dance just to pay my dues. Then maybe when I'm 65, I could take a cruise. How that sound? Sounds like you come a long way, man. So why don't you tell me about now? Now? It's like make it happen. For once I'm feeling like I really might make it rap. Impact house, people paid the fee to see the main attraction. Turns out that attraction's me. Guess we gaining traction put together the team it's kind of nice to see how quickly we accomplishing dreams from simply taking action but still i wait with bated breath i ain't afraid of death but life is short and we still haven't made it yet we not rich and tired from the tension because if moms can't pay mortgage she'll have to sell her house and my pop just said he maybe won't retire with a pension so i'm caught up in the cheese trap not trying to kill a mouse but I know so many want to take a stab at this rap stuff And all I have is a microphone and message though Even that's enough for me to bust out with this abacus Cause that's what it's gonna take to count all of my blessings, bro So shout out to creator or whoever You put me in a good place and I'll try to make it better Thanks again Wow, sounds like you're on your way, brother Hey, you got any shout outs before we get up out of here? Yeah, definitely, man First of all, shout out to the universal force that blessed me with the gift of a happy life so far, you know? Because a lot of people can't say the same. Uh, my family for supporting me always. My sister, my mom, my dad, my thousands of cousins, aunties and uncles all over the world. Shouts out to my Frisco natives too, because, you know, we might be the last ones left, you feel me? All my bros from the Mission, my North Beach family, Fillmore, HP, Sunset, everywhere, man. Special shouts to my partners, Ill Quals, RM, the OG Blackmail team, my brother, Sackmaster, ATG, my RMA homies, my Raw Dad homies, and especially Boo Star, Charlie Boy, the homie Smooth. Because without y'all, none of this would be possible for real. And Boo I know things change a lot, but it's still nothing but love between us. Please believe that. Rest in peace to my grandparents. Rest in peace to the man who taught me how to rap Big Tuna. Rest in peace to D-Mac, man. We really miss you, bro. And free my brother Calvin. It's just too many people to name, so if I forgot anyone, then just know I got love for you all, too. I just need you to know that. And that was Nostalgia by A1 off of the Thrill Tape. Up next, I'm going to play some more music um, from actually local USF bands. So next week, next Wednesday, at Submission Art Space over in Mission, 
Um, there's going to be a pretty great show. That's all USF bands. So hibbity dibbity wag and Plastic Villains will be playing this show. So in honor of that, of course, I'm going to be playing some Plastic Villains. This song is called Fish Hook Esquire. One of my personal favorites. And also, these are this is one of the uh, first bands that we ever got a chance to interview for the website. So be sure to, be sure to check that out. Um, read the interview. It's pretty great. And there's also a video to accompany it. So check it out. The song is called, again, Fish Hook Esquire. <laughs>
And that was French Cassettes with the song Little Shoes off of Summer Darling. Before that, we played Third Street by Caldecott after the self-titled album Caldecott. Before that, we played Dear Indigo, Indigo with the song Frame of Gold. So uh, we're kind of coming to the closing of our show, so I'm going to play a little bit more music. Um, once again, in the theme of a local show going on next week in submission, I'm going to play some hibbity dibbity for y'all. Before I do so, make sure to check out the website and all the great writing that we have on there. Um, at wemoveagainstthetides.com or for those of you who are a little too lazy to write out the entire thing uh, at wmatt.com make sure to tweet us or follow us on twitter at, at wmattmusic uh, follow us on our daily at wmattdaily.tumblr.com or on instagram and all of our other social media websites um, there's a lot of ways to get a hold of us so uh, you know just make sure you're reaching all of them um, so yeah in that sense um, and saying all that I'm going to play some more music and finish off y'all with two more songs, and then I'm going to be heading on out. Um, this next song is called Fertile Eyes by Hibbity Dibbity. I want to be a wordless ember. I just need time to dry. I catch my breath, start all over when her drift. I rest my head on your pillow. I rest my limb among your leaves. The fire burns, smoke will billow. I hang my soul from your tree. Autumn comes. Throw a blanket on the ground Autumn goes Gone without a sound Autumn comes Winter lay me down Lay me down Cause I want to be A weeping willow Bury me Beneath its roots Once again, that was Fertilized by Hibbity Dibbity off of their demo. Um, so there's that show going on next week, May 4th. We have uh, Fat Opie's going to be doing their full band show with River Shiver. Um, May 1st, we have the show with uh, Hibbity Dibbity Wag, as well as uh, as uh, the Plastic Villains. That'll be at Submission Art Space over in the Mission. And, um, of course, there's a bunch of shows going on this weekend. I think this weekend there's uh, Lost Church. Sorry, next weekend's Lost Church. So... Be sure to check out the Dub Matt calendar for more info on shows that are coming up. And I'm going to finish off with a song from uh, 
from Fat Opie. Um, one of the ones that he didn't get to play, um, but as that is the self self titled name of his album, Victory Vo. Um, so very, very big thanks to Scott Mickelson for coming on in and playing in with playing with us and just hanging out and talking and having a good time. Um, so for those of you who are listening, be sure to check out the website. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, on Instagram. And until next Thursday, keep on moving. Too far gone for even dogs to pick up the scent Two more drinks and you'll detect a slight accent I made few decisions that all been made for me. I was taught to pay full price for mediocrity. That's the way life fails in Victoryville. No questions asked in ample parking. No. Sun and victory I left a woman there, she paralyzed me with fear. Kept four cats and named them all Angel. She ate a dog. She said I should try it for anything that is. She was born and raised in Victoryville.